Eric, it is always a pleasure to have you on this show. I'm glad to be here, fellas. A, a three-time alumni <laughs> of manufacturing. Is that a thing? Have, yeah, <laughs> no, it is. It is, it is now. It is now because you've been here three times. Um, you know, we, I got to ask you a question that's a, a big theme in your philosophy. You talk about technology hesitancy, mm -hmm. right? When manufacturers are afraid to try a new technology that you need to be empathetic and you really need to understand like what the root cause of why someone might be worried about going from zero to one to install their first robot to install automation. I'm curious, since we've talked to you before, how are you seeing manufacturers, people in the logistics industry, how are you seeing them deal with technology? at this current time. It's been a year since we last spoke about this. So I'm curious what the current state is. Yeah, well, if the expectation had been that hesitancy would evaporate in 12 months' time, <laughs> that has not happened, right? Um, you know, it's still true that warehouse automation is a nascent industry. And while there's, you know, everybody's dabbling, it's really difficult to, for folks to just dive in whole cloth and you know where's that come from it comes from you know they've been successful right if it's true that we're all victims of our own success mm -hmm. that's a lot of what this is right i mean they've been able to meet volumes at cutoff windows and grow their business they've had to do it on the backs of labor but it was reliable and it worked and now the labor's not available. What am I going to do? Uh, okay, robots. But I don't have any, have never had any, don't really understand what I'm saying when I speak the word and how it's actually going to affect what we do. Um, I know this, when I take and bring in an associate, you know, uh, maybe hire a temp agency, whatever, and start filling roles, I spent a little bit of time training them. I didn't have to teach them to walk. I didn't have to teach them, you know, a lot of things that, oh, now I'm going to put mobile robots in. I have to teach them the way. Oh, I'm going to put robot arms in. I have to, you know, teach them what they're looking at. All of those sorts of things that we can just assume people do, that you can't assume robots do. All of that lends itself to this hesitancy. Even with that, it is clearly improved. And it's improved because... You know, some of it is just time in market, and some of it is you're starting to see the Halo users emerge. Mm -hmm. That's hugely important, right? Everybody wants representation matters, right? People want to see somebody that looks like them that has taken that step and is successful with it and vocal about it. Those are two different things, folks. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You can be very successful and hold it tight to the vest, you know, the ones that aren't out loud are the ones that are didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> but to be successful and talk about it is, you know, new to see that happen. Um, you know, I was uh, uh, yesterday there was a talk and Ben Perlson from DHL, mm -hmm. right, talking about all of the different things that they've taken on in their automation journey and the successes that they can point to. Those are the types of things that pull this industry forward and narrow the catastrophe gap in the mind of the user of this warehouse operator uh, and, you know, mitigates hesitancy and we can move faster. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So DHL talked about some of the expansions that they made, but plus one on their own has also made some pretty big leaps. Uh, last year at AML, we were there sitting in Memphis and you announced the partnership with Locus Robotics. Yeah. At Modex this year in Atlanta, you guys announced the partnership with Tompkins Robotics. Mm -hmm. And then here at the booth in uh, Boston, you guys have a fetch robot. Yeah. Can you expand more on why you guys have focused on partnerships so much and not just growing your own solutions, growing yonder, just making what you guys do at Plus One just better, but also what you see with your partners? So what I see with my partners is legs. They may be wheels, but they're yeah. legs effectively, right? Uh, and my robot is arms and eyes. And, you know, they're bolted to the ground. So if they're going to affect meaningful work, stuff has to show up. Mm -hmm. 
and stuff has to leave. And in a lot of the cases, well, we're just doing that with conveyance, conveyance in, conveyance out, conveyance in, sorter out, uh, pallet in, pallet out. But the fact is, in a lot of these instances, that infrastructure is not there. They've got somebody that's either, you know, pulling a toe, you know, tugging a dolly or, you know, driving a forklift. So if it's true that most sort of workflows in the warehouse are some combo of mobility and manipulation, then what I do can't stand alone and grow as fast as it could. And so that's where the partnerships with mobility comes in. So we've got, uh, you're right, so uh, Locus and uh, Follow Me robots, right? Uh, uh, Tompkins, which is effectively a sorting machine using tiny little AMRs. Yep. Uh, and then uh, Fetch. So Fetch, in this case, is presenting us totes. Uh, we, you know manipulate all the parcels out of the toad, put them in wherever they're going next, and these sort of AMRs recirculate. So that's neat. Uh, and in the interest of full disclosure, uh, Zebra is an investor in Plus One yeah. and has been for a very long time. So we've sort of been together through this automation journey. And, of course, their fetch acquisition yep. made our partnership uh, you know, easy to, to understand and go after. I'll tell you what is going to be the more exciting demo is when we come together the next time and it's not just one of these, but lots of them because we figured out the interoperability piece. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I know that's been a subject of conversations, uh, you know, in the industry and I'm sure on this podcast, but, you know, no single one of these modalities gets the job done. You're going to have to have multiples. So either there's a mobility house that builds all of the different morphologies of mobility, or you're going to have to deal with a constellation of them. Yes. And that's my bet, and that's the reason that you know, we sort of pursue these partnerships like you've been seeing. So I have one more question that will probably get a long, thoughtful answer. Jake, do you have anything you want yeah, to add? How about you ask yours that? first? Uh, yeah. All right. So... Uh, we, Eric and I were chatting before we hit record. We were having lunch together. And one of the reasons I enjoy interviewing you so much is I always get some sage career advice <laughs> from you as well. So this is going to be more the career and leadership topic. But okay. you were ta telling me about the conversations you have with people that join your team on their first day yeah. at Plus One. And there's some irony to that conversation. Can you share what that conversation is like? Yeah, this is one of the fun things I get to do uh, at Plus One. So, you know, there's always onboarding. Mm -hmm. And day one uh, is always such a happy time, right? People are getting their laptop. They're getting their swag. They got a Plus One hoodie. You know, day one's a good yeah. day. Yeah. Um, but I sit down with, you know, folks that join us and say, hey, I want to talk to you about your last day at Plus One. And some folks, that kind of spooks. But, you know, here's the thing. If we hire somebody at Plus One, it's because they are capable, they are talented, they are hardworking, right? They have all the makings of a superstar in their own right. And in my view, that means they're not going to retire from Plus One. Mm -hmm. At some point, they're going to want to go do their next thing uh and so i talk to them about let's assume that you are going to have a last day at plus one i want to talk to you about when that should be mm. and uh my position is the day you stop learning at plus one is the day you owe it to yourself and to me to turn in your notice the day you stop learning, because that's the day that this becomes just a paycheck. And life's too short. Yeah. Move on. And so, uh, but what that really does is it puts the onus on me and the leadership team to ensure that they are always learning. Because I don't want them to go. Yeah. 
I want to glean as much from their talents and their energy, you know, as I can. But I already made the declaration that the day you stop learning is the day you got to go. So professional development, you want to learn some new skill, you want to try something else in the organization, whatever it is that you find as compelling as you sort of fill out your skill set. We're here for it because we've already said, if you stop learning, you're going to leave. Yeah. Right? There was, uh, there was a story I heard. I think it was actually in, um, Carol, in, in Charlotte. And there was a manufacturer out there that started in 2020, 21, uh, 2021 where they rolled out a retention interview. So every six months, they actually interview all the employees and saying, what are you doing right now? And what do you wish you were doing right now? Mm. And from that, they actually had, from their standard, what they would call workers or operators, they've seen a 42% increase in retention by doing a, every six months, interviewing the employees, saying, what are you liking and what do you want to do? I get that. You know, everybody's got a path. Yeah. And you have to assume they do and then sort of work with them to discover it and to support them along the way. And you're a lot stickier as an employer. Absolutely. Do you have anything you want? That's no, a, t- that's I, a that, tough that, conversation that, yeah. to top. Like, yeah, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Eric, we always appreciate you jumping on. Is there anything you wish we would have asked you that we didn't cover today? Things that I wish we'd talked about. Um, I'm interested in seeing how these clusters keep developing. Mm, yeah. You know? Uh uh, I bring it up because the last time we were together was in Pittsburgh. Yep, you got Pittsburgh, you got Silicon Valley, you got Boston where we are. And do we have, do we have a San Antonio cluster That's right the now? thing. I'm confident that oh, the next okay. emerging cluster will be San Antonio, yeah. Austin. Yeah. The I-35 robotics corridor mm-hmm. will be a thing. Uh, and, you know, is it going to be Boston? I mean, are we going to be Boston? No. Are we going to be the Bay Area? No. But Pittsburgh, Atlanta, San Antonio, Austin, Mm -hmm. these are going to be sort of the next places where robotics happens at scale. Uh, And, you know, this is a good thing. We need it all throughout the country. Uh, We need to be tapping into more pockets of, you know, universities and research groups, et cetera. Uh, And, uh, you know, it's all to the good for where we're building this whole industry. Well, Eric, I love learning from our conversations every time we chat. Thanks so much for jumping back on. I appreciate it. We'll talk soon, guys.